a surprise when i ended the last lecture lecture number 11 i said that will be the last in the series on daimler integration but subsequent to that i wanted to give another proof of a theorem where you know integral f d alpha equal to integral f alpha dash under various conditions okay and uh, the article had a slightly more difficult proof then i thought of a much simpler proof which is included in the article so i thought it may be a good idea to give this this version as well as its proof okay so let us get started so earlier what we proved was the following result so we proved let a b be a function closed and bounded interval this is a function and let alpha be any bounded function but which is a c1 okay naturally it's going to be bounded that is continuously differentiable hmm? and what did we assume i think we assume that uh, uh, assume f belong to r of alpha that means f is alpha integrable then we said that integral f d alpha over a to b is same as integral f alpha dash a to b ordinary riemann integral because alpha dash is continuous and f is integrable product of integral functions is integrable we already know that okay so yeah so this is the theorem which you wanted to prove but there is a slight uh, thing which you want us to really think mm, yeah see we know f is uh, yeah right right f is r alpha is okay then f is integrable alpha dash is integrable this is ordinary riemann integral you understand that this is ordinary riemann integral and for riemann integral we have proved the product of two integrable functions is again integrable you understand that you have done okay these are the things which i already explained in the last lecture wherever we did that and today the version this is one version okay the other version as i said this is for all practical purposes this version is good enough okay right so you notice that alpha could be anything which i accept it is c1 and the only thing we need about f is f must be alpha integrable therefore this left side makes sense right side makes sense because a product of integrable functions is integrable is that clear just to go through this kind of theorem statements more okay try to understand break it into small pieces assimilate digest the idea okay instead of simply learning by heart okay now what we want to do today is something like this suppose again f from a b to r okay assume it's integrable that is it's just riemann integrable okay then alpha what i'm going to assume is that it is alpha is increasing and differentiable increasing differentiable and alpha dash is integrable this is again riemann integrable right you follow that yeah right then we want to say f is in r of alpha and and integral f d alpha is integral f alpha dash and of course if you want right here to b etc again as i said make sure the right side makes sense because we are assuming f is integrable alpha dash is integrable right therefore the product is integrable right side makes sense and this we want to part of the claim is that this makes sense the left side makes sense whereas let's look at the last theorem we assume this makes sense here we are concluding it makes sense you understand that f is alpha integral we are assuming in the last version in this version we are as we are going to prove f is alpha integral okay and the equality looks the same 
but the slightly hypers are different second let us go through the kind of individual merits and demerits pros and cons of various things whenever the similar looking theorems are there you should see what is the hypothesis what is the conclusion etc right here the conclusion of the integrals are the same but then you assumed f is alpha integrable here we are claiming that okay and second here the assumption is alpha is just is continuously differentiable but nothing to do with increasing whereas here we are assuming it is increasing and then we are not assuming alpha dash is continuous it's just integrable because alpha dash is continuous then it is naturally integrable okay you understand so this is a slightly weakening of that hypothesis right next suppose f is continuous already right then it does not matter if f is continuous then f will be alpha integrable f is also integrable so there is no condition okay so for that this is either f is not alpha or f is integrable does not make any difference they are one and the same i mean both happen all the time okay and second suppose alpha is a heaviside function right if suppose alpha is a heaviside function okay but it's, it's not continuously differentiable here you understand that yeah so here i have to say f is in r alpha here i have to say f is integrable is that all right okay so just to try to compare and try to see when okay which is a stronger hypothesis weaker hypothesis etc and our conclusion is weaker or stronger you see that there is nothing like this is the best this is better than that or something whereas if you compare with my earlier result about uh, first fundamental theorem of calculus the first proof is most general whereas the second version which was deduced from the second fundamental theorem of calculus is weaker see these are the things you know you don't write you know you don't get explained so you have to learn these things okay that's how you become a technically more pro proficient you become an expert in the subject okay right so i want to prove this so as usual what i'm going to do is i'm going to think aloud how i got the proof so let us answer. so what is that i want i want to prove a piece alpha integrable that means if f is alpha integrable, i know this must happen so let us call this number as a what is the number a it is the integral of f alpha dash from a to b this ordinary Riemann integrable so i want to say f is alpha integrable so if f is alpha integrable see now you are going to see something very interesting about the proof let me say that before okay let me just say that okay if it's all point up that means what i have to do take some partition q then for any partition there is a partition p so that for every partition q finer than p and for any set of tags yes f q t alpha minus a should be less than epsilon right so if f, uh, if i want to show f is in r alpha with this as the integral alpha integral then what should i do for any given epsilon i should estimate this is that clear yeah luckily as i said earlier since i know what is the integral going to be so i should look at the riemann sum approach do you understand the reason now why i took the riemann sum because i already said that earlier right whether i should use riemann's definition or a darboro approach okay since i know what the integral is going to be it's easier if i use riemann sum okay good now let's write this yes f q t alpha let's not worry about epsilon p q etc yes okay now let's write as a riemann sum how does the riemann sum look like so it's going to look like f of t i into delta alpha i that's it right okay right now what is this as I we did in the case of uh, this first version again the same thing so what will i have i will have f of ti into alpha of xi minus alpha of xi minus one i equal to one to n is it clear now what will i do again as i did in the earlier version natural thing is apply the mean value theorem therefore what will i have i equal to 1 to n f of ti but then there exists an x si where in the interval xi minus 1 to xi therefore it's going to be alpha prime of si into xi minus xi minus 1 is that clear 
yeah right but what we know we know f alpha dash is rem integrable with the int as yeah, the integral okay so if you give an epsilon what do i know there is a partition p so that for every partition q greater than or equal to p and for any set of tags in t i know this okay f alpha dash below is r of a b okay this implies for this epsilon there is a partition p so that for every partition finer than p what will i have yes of f alpha dash q t minus a should be less than epsilon but what is this object this object is f of ti alpha dash of ti into xi minus xi minus 1 minus a in modulus should be less than epsilon yeah you understand now let's go back this is this minus this is one that to the Riemann sum of f with respect to alpha i want it to be less than epsilon distance from a but what i have is Riemann sum of f times alpha dash is epsilon distance from a so look at those two things what is preventing us as in this case or as in this proof please compare this proof okay again go through the proof the first proof so that you will see the interesting thing okay how the proof becomes much simpler here yeah so what will i do so i only have to say right are you following what i'm saying okay so i have something like a i have a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon right this follow is within that but i want some other follow who is that follow this is yes f f alpha dash q t this lies somewhere here but i want yes f q t alpha should lie in some epsilon no, not necessarily epsilon some multiple epsilon possibly that that's not we will be very flexible there okay right so what should i do now as we did i only have to say okay what is the difference i have this is alpha dash of ti minus f of ti into alpha dash of si the whole thing into xi minus xi minus one yeah look at this this and this is what i'm comparing so how much do these two fellows differ if their distance between this okay maybe i'll put a pink circle my favorite thing this follow and the distance between this follow okay or something to do with epsilon some constant time epsilon then i know this guy will also be some constant times epsilon from a are you following that's a trick now let's look at this this is alpha right this is equal to summation f of ti into alpha prime ti minus alpha prime si into xi minus xi minus 1 so i want the distance okay so this will be less than or equal to this fellow into this fellow into this mode but then this is always positive so i don't have to worry about okay so what do we do as usual i can assume mod f is less than equal to let's say some constant c therefore this will be less than equal to c times summation alpha prime ti minus alpha prime si in modulus times xi minus xi minus 1 yeah now have i seen this before have you seen this before many times you have seen how many of you can remember right so let's go back what do i know about alpha prime my new hypothesis alpha prime is integrable right right you understand yeah therefore so with respect to some partition p i know this alpha prime t okay t lies in let's say something some partition xi minus 1 to xi minus alpha prime s yes. yeah okay t s yes, are all here this will be okay we know is less than equal to m i of alpha dash minus m i of alpha dash this we had already seen that you understand that 
therefore i can write a thing this will be less than equal to summation m i of alpha dash minus small m i of alpha dash into x i minus x i minus 1 do you understand this but what is this this is nothing as an l of alpha dash with respect to some partition okay My, sorry u u of alpha dash minus l of alpha dash with respect to some partition that's it yeah some partition let's not worry about so what do i want i want this to be less than epsilon all right so are you following yeah so i can make so this i want it to be let's say so total thing is i want this to be less than epsilon by 2 that means this partition call it if you want some p1 okay this partition p1 should be chosen so that u alpha dash p1 minus l alpha dash p1 should be less than epsilon by c time to 2 because i may want epsilon by 2 are you following yeah now how do i do that so what did i start with ti you see that now i have to is the proof idea clear now how how will i write it carefully see the, what we know is since f is an yeah let's look at it yeah so since f alpha dash is in is Riemann integral given epsilon I know there is a partition P so that this happens make it express a little bit 2 now you understand that so some partition called P1 for every Q greater than P1 right now since alpha dash is integrable then there is a partition P2 now let me call it P2 right so that u alpha dash p2 minus l alpha alpha dash p2 is less than epsilon by 2c right so if i take p equal to p1 union p2 right then and to start with any q which is finer than p that q will be finer than p1 as well as that q will be finer than p2 therefore both these inequalities this inequality as well as this inequality will be true this inequality will be true you have follow that therefore what do i get therefore i have modulus yes f q where q is finer than p1 union p2 t alpha minus a will be less than or equal to yes f q t alpha minus yes f alpha dash q t yeah remember yes f q t alpha is this object yeah i wanted to say yes f alpha right uh yeah alpha integral right right this is correct so what is that I have to look at? I have to look at this object. So that object is what I have. Yes. Oh, are you are you following? Okay. Plus yes, yep, alpha dash Q T minus E. So that will be Ladan equal to this fellow and plus this fellow. And we know this fellow is less than equal to epsilon by 2. This fellow also less than epsilon by 2 equal to epsilon. Yeah. You see that? So the idea is very simple. So again, you should compare. So in the case here, what did we do? In the first proof, what we did? So you should not try to remember proofs. Okay. When you read, go through, analyze, then slowly you will you will begin to think you can construct your own proof. That's the easy way. See, for example, that's how I got this proof. Okay. In this, what did you do? We assumed this is a, alpha is continuously differentiable. Right? Therefore, again we, we used mean value theorem. Since alpha is continuously differentiable, what we know is okay, we can use uh, what did we use? Yeah. 
right we can use some kind of a bound using uniform continuity etc we got a bound for this yeah we use this but then this fellow is going to be continuous differential therefore it will also be bounded then i can get some kind of an estimate okay whereas see there also we got something similar you understood that but here what we do uh, yeah yeah right sorry i'm here i'm sorry i just i take back let's go back In the first uh, version we assume alpha dash is continuous therefore what we do was this let us look at alpha dash ti minus alpha dash si okay we again use integrability okay what we do is continuous to differentiable therefore it's uniformly continuous right it's uniformly continuous and hence okay if i choose a partition wherever is whose length is small enough the lengths of the sub nodes are small enough this will be less than something to the epsilon therefore i'll have some m times b minus a times something to do with epsilon do you remember yeah what what did we do here we simply observe this polo is nothing other than mi minus capital mi minus small mi and you invoked integrability of alpha dash Okay. okay please keep the proof side by side and try to understand that's how you can master such proofs you will master analysis but then if you think little more carefully you will see something very interesting even in this proof that's all we used in some sense why when you wanted to show a continuous function is integrable what did you do you use uniform continuity okay and chose a partition such that the sub intervals have very very small length therefore this fellow you can estimate you can estimate by means of epsilon do you understand right are you following so you can see all the three proofs are interrelated okay yeah i hope you enjoyed and do not get confused you okay even if you get confused is fine just go through this kind of argument you will think about you will see that you have become master of some, some such thing okay i hope you enjoy this proof Please go through the proof. Keep both the proofs if you want. Uh, take a piece of paper. Uh, write the first proof where you assume alpha is continuously differentiable. Uh, you write the second proof where we assume alpha is increasing and alpha dash is integrable. Where did you use alpha is increasing? Because we said alpha is increasing. Where did you use that? go through the second proof where did you use that okay keep that okay but then the crucial idea was we had something like summation f of ti into alpha dash of ti minus alpha dash of si in modulus times delta xi that is xi minus xi minus 1 in both the things we got it in the alpha continuously differentiable what i use was alpha dash is uniformly continuous and get a bound for that in the second thing what we observed was mod alpha dash ti minus alpha dash si is less than i could capital mi minus small mi of alpha dash and alpha dash is integrable therefore i can use riemann criterion yeah right but one step up further let's go back to alpha's continuously differentiable then we use only uniform continuity but then remember there also we used upper sum minor lower sum for very very fine partition can be controlled how did you use that uniform continuity only so we are essentially repeating the proof of integrability of continuous function in the case of alpha continuous differentiable when we wanted to estimate mod alpha ti minus alpha si okay see this kind of subtle thing technical things are never discussed in books and this are just line by line proof is there so you think it's much easier but then you have to remember now if you analyze this kind of proof okay you know how to do mathematics on your own that's my aim okay i hope you appreciate it okay and i this okay i'll stop this lecture with this